Hi everyone, Ashley here and welcome to another video on my YouTube channel. I am so happy and excited to be participating in another Lawn Fawn Fans YouTube hop. This is a seasonal hop where a bunch of really talented designers share creations using Lawn Fawn products that are based on seasonal themes. So this is of course the fall hop. Please check down in the description below for more information on who to hop to next, as well as a giveaway, which is really exciting. But without further ado, let's get into the card making. I am making a reveal wheel card. So I cut a piece of white cardstock with this reveal wheel die and also with the add-on die meant for a fishbowl. And I'll show that here. I turned it upside down. So you can see where it's meant to slot into that reveal wheel rectangle die and cut out that fishbowl shape, but I actually turned it upside down and cut it out in the same area so that it will work better as the cutout on top of the cauldron. As you might've seen in the thumbnails, that's where I'm going with this. I wanted the cutout to look like it's the contents of the cauldron and different contents of the cauldron will of course come through as you turn that reveal wheel. So I die cut that in that shape off camera and then I also die cut this uh, scalloped circle that acts as sort of the actual reveal wheel itself. I'm using that template that again is just meant for the fishbowl, um, which has three openings and I'm taking a pencil and tracing it onto that reveal wheel scalloped circle. So that gives me an idea of where those openings will be. Then I can take that circle and stamp on the three images that I want to come when I swirl the reveal wheel or turn the reveal wheel. And that is just three images that come from some of Lawn Fawn's newest stamp sets. They're Perfectly Wicked and Perfectly Wicked add-on, which are really cute stamp sets that have cats and a whole bunch of sort of magical elements in a cauldron and a spell book and things like that. And of course the stamp sets have these images of things to go in a cauldron. So what I'm stamping here is one of them is uh, bubbles, one of them is candy, and one of them is worms. So once I've stamped those into those openings that I traced, I can come in with my eraser and just erase those pencil marks so that they're not visible at all. And then now these images are stamped in the perfect place to come up in that opening of the reveal wheel. Now it's time to go ahead and do a whole bunch of coloring. I'm not going to show all of the coloring in this video or else the video would be even longer than it already is, but I am going to show you some of the coloring. I will mention that I stamped all of these images in Gina K Amalgam ink, which is a really nice ink for Copic coloring on some Nina Solar White cardstock. And I just used my mini Misty tool to stamp everything so I could stamp everything multiple times and get a really nice crisp black image. Like I mentioned, I am using the Perfectly Wicked and Perfectly Wicked add-on stamp sets for this. Those are the only stamp sets I used. Usually when I make a card with Lawn Fawn supplies, I like to use a whole bunch of different stamp sets because as I'm sure that you know if you're watching this, Lawn Fawn makes so many stamp sets that coordinate so well together and have so many different cute images that can be used with one another. So it's really fun to kind of go through your stash and find images that work with the scene that you have in your head. So I usually tend to incorporate, you know, like upwards of five, six, even 10 different Lawn Fawn stamp sets when I'm making a card. But for this one, it was actually enough to just use Perfectly Wicked and the Perfectly Wicked add-on set. And there were so many cute little images in those that it was enough to fill up the whole card. Now, as I've been talking, I've gone ahead and colored two different cats. Um, I, as you can see, I did color a couple off camera because they don't end up making it onto the card, but don't worry, I saved them for another card. That happens to me a lot where I color a lot of images and then I just don't end up having space for them on my card. So I just saved them for the next card. Um, so the first cat that I colored was black, the second one was calico, and this last one is brown. And it's always so fun to color these cats with all different kinds of patterns that you can imagine. I do always try to incorporate at least one that has the colors of my cat, which is gray, but um, really any color of cat is fun to try. Okay, so now I'm coming in and coloring these images on this reveal wheel scallop circle. And again, like I mentioned, one of them is worms, which I colored in with a couple greens. One of them is blue, which I colored in uh, bubbles, which I colored in with blue. And then one of them is candy, which I colored in with some classic Halloween colors, some pinks, purples, and greens and blues. Finally, once I'm done coloring in each of these images, I'm gonna color the whole background of the piece with a yellow marker. And you'll see that in a little bit. Okay, so coming back to this reveal wheel piece, like I mentioned, I cut this out with the reveal wheel rectangle die and then the add-on that is meant to be used for a fishbowl, but I turned it upside down. Once that was done, I did trim the whole piece down so it's more of a square than a rectangle. Now I can come in with my ink blending colors and some blending brushes to blend them on. I started with a bright yellow, that squeezed lemonade distress oxide ink, and I just colored that or blended that in sort of a circle around that reveal wheel opening. 
I wanted this to kind of be a halo behind the cauldron to make it almost seem like there's light emitting from the cauldron, which I thought was really fun. Then I took this pink color, which is picked raspberry, and I blended that all the way around. And I'm just kind of going back and forth with my brushes to blend those two together. You get kind of a nice orange tone in between them. Finally, to add a bit of darkness, I'm coming in with a dark purple. This is Seedless Preserves. And I'm taking my blending brush and again, just kind of going around in a circular motion all the way around that halo color. So I start in the middle with yellow, then pink, then purple, blending them all outwards in sort of a circular motion. And of course, blending between the colors to get nice blends. So once that is done, I can then add some fun effects from stenciling. So I'm taking this glow in the dark stencil paste, which again was released recently by Lan Fan, and I'm using an older stencil of theirs. Um, which I'm going to be putting onto this panel. But before I do, I just had to show you how cool this stencil base is. I charged it up by holding it under my lamp and then turned the lights off. And when it's in the jar, it looks so cool. I actually had to call my husband from the next room just to show him. I thought that was so neat. I don't know why I'm like a child, but um, you know, being excited by glow in the dark again, but it's so fun. So I took the Lawn Fawn Starry Skies stencil and I placed my panel down onto it upside down, taped it together, and then turned the whole thing over so that I could start stenciling. I'm taking that glow in the dark stencil paste and using a palette knife to just apply it to the whole panel, just gently because these openings are very tiny. So you wanna be careful as you apply this. And I'm trying to apply it in a somewhat thin layer. I find that if I apply any stencil paste too thick, it really kind of has the paper warp a little bit and it just weighs it down. So I try to scrape off as much as I can after I've applied. Once I've done that, I can pull the stencil back and take the tape off and then you see this beautiful pattern. Now it is hard to see right now because this glow in the dark paste dries clear. But once I turn the light off, you can see it. It's so cool, I love it. Um, unfortunately, a lot of this will get covered by some of the elements that I end up putting on the card, but a lot of it does shine through as well and I just think it's such a fun little detail. Okay, so like I mentioned before, I am coloring the background of this reveal wheel scalloped circle in yellow. I'm just using a Copic marker for this. And this is, uh, the idea behind this is just that the background will match sort of that halo that we had blended onto the panel. So that squeezed lemonade distress oxide ink creates that yellow circle. And I just wanted the background to, of this to be yellow as well. I colored sort of more towards the center of this circle with a light yellow, and then I'm coming around the edges with a bit of a darker yellow just to have a little bit of interest in blend so it's not just one flat color. As a final touch of detail on these, I'm taking a white uh, gel pen and a sparkly gel pen and just adding some little dots around them so that it just kind of makes it look like they're sparkling. Um, and I'll show that up close in the video in just a moment because it is a little bit hard to see as I'm doing this um, on camera right now. Um, but you'll see that, it, yeah, it just kind of looks like the images are glowing and adds a really nice little detail again, so it's not just so flat. So there you go. As I turn it in the light, you can kind of see those little dots and how they just add a bit of a sparkle. And of course, I have to kind of test it out. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, I have colored in all of my images, and I'm just adding a bit of a final touch onto those little bottles. The stamp set actually comes with some little words that you can add to the bottles, as well as the books, actually. So little words onto the bottles and the spines of the books. Um, they say things like potions and spells and Eye of Newt, and I thought those were so cute. Coming back to the sort of card base, I am taking a piece of white cardstock cut to the size of a standard size card, so four and a quarter by five and a half, and I'm blending it with three different colors. So I started in the middle with this bright blue, that's Blueprint Sketch. And then I'm taking a darker blue, this is chipped sapphire, and coming in around the edges. Again, kind of in a bit of a circular, almost like oval pattern, where I'm coming in at the corners with the darker ink. I'm just using my blending tools for this, but you could use brushes as well. I tend to go back and forth between my blending tools, um, whether I'm using these foam applicators or brushes. Again, as usual, I'm going back and forth between the colors to get a nice blend. And then finally, I'm bringing in some black Distress Oxide ink. This is black soot and coming in around the edges, again, kind of coming in a little bit more at the corners to create kind of that oval look and blending that back and forth as well. And this just brings a really nice depth of darkness and color uh, to the background. Now this piece will actually be the background for the whole card. So this is going to be adhered directly to the card base and our reveal wheel mechanism will go on top of this. To add some shine, I'm taking some Avery L Shimmer Spray, shaking it up like crazy so that all the shimmer gets incorporated, and then spraying that with a few spritzes directly onto that card base. 
Then I will come in with a paper towel to kind of dab off some of the excess moisture from this. You'll see that that it does pull up a little bit of the ink because of course distress oxide inks are water reactive so you'll get some of that ink pulling away, but that's okay. I think it really adds to the effect and almost makes it look like a starry night sky. And as I turn this, you can kind of see how shiny it is. Of course, it's still wet, but I promise that when it dries, it stays super shiny and sparkly. Okay, so it's time to start assembling this reveal wheel mechanism. First, I realized that I just needed to snip away a little bit of that opening so that it more closely matches the shape of the cauldron. Then I can take my reveal wheel scalloped circle and add that little tiny circle behind it and put a brad through both pieces. Just as a little tiny brad, just slide it through both and then you can open that brad or I guess you kind of open it to close it. <laughs> and that way you have that scalloped circle with that little circle attached. Then I'm taking some little foam squares and adding them onto the back of that little circle. And these are just tiny little square foam squares. I am using three just to kind of give it some nice stability. And once those are added, I can then pull the release paper off and line it up with my card. Um, I'm actually using the original template stencil for this because it shows you where those opening edges should be. And it just kind of helps me line this up with the opening. So you can see here, I lined up the stencil with the scallop circle, and now I'm lining that up behind the window and kind of just figuring out where it needs to be so that it's perfectly lined up with that window. Once I'm done that, I can take that and just stick it right down onto the backing piece, which again was cut with that reveal wheel rectangle die and cut down to a square. And now that reveal wheel scallop circle is stuck down exactly in the place it needs to be so that when you turn it, um, the images come up in the opening. I then added some foam squares all around that space, making sure not to interfere with the wheel itself. And then I can stick that card front down onto that backing. And then you see when you turn the wheel, you get each of those little images coming up in the cauldron, which I also just glued down onto the card panel there as well. This is so much fun and I will be showing this off more as the video continues, so don't worry. <laughs> in order for the person to know that they need to turn the wheel, I just took this really cute little stamp that says turn here for magic and I white heat embossed it onto this backing piece. And you'll see how that sort of aligns with the reveal wheel once we start putting everything together. Okay, so time to start putting everything together. I have a standard size card base. This is A2 or four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I just glued that blue blended piece directly down onto the card base. Then I can glue this reveal wheel piece directly down onto that. And again, I'm just making sure to line it up with those words that say turn here for magic. And that way those words come up in that little opening and the person knows that they need to turn that reveal wheel. To finish off this card, I am taking all of those cute little images that I had stamped, colored, and cut out and sort of just placing them around the card where I think they look cute and gluing them down. I just used liquid glue to glue them because I figured the card already had enough dimension from that reveal wheel mechanism. Here you can see as I turn the wheel, you get all the different little things coming up in the cauldron, so cute. Okay, now to finish off the card with the sentiment. I cut out the word wicked using Finley's ABC dies, twice out of white cardstock and once out of yellow glitter cardstock. And I'm just gluing each of those letters together and that allows the word wicked to have some dimension to it because it's got two layers of white and one layer of yellow. I also stamped out the sentiment, hope your Halloween is on some black cardstock. I stamped it using some Versamark ink and then white heat embossed it and cut it down into a little sentiment strip. I stuck that sentiment strip right at the bottom of all the images and then I stuck down all of those letters that make up the word wicked onto the bottom there. That fills in that space at the bottom of the card nicely. So this is the finished card. It, it's quite a complex one. There's a lot of sort of pieces that went into it, especially with the interactive element, but I really think the effort pays off. I love how when you turn that reveal wheel, you get each of those different sort of images and elements coming up in the cauldron. And of course, when you turn the lights off, you see that beautiful glow in the dark stencil paste. I'm trying to show it off here. There is a little bit of light coming in through my window that it couldn't help. I'm trying to block it with my hand, but you do get the idea. It's, it's so stunning and it's even better in real life. I really love these cute images and how cute of a Halloween card they make. So thank you so much for sticking through this long video with me and getting through to the end. I do hope that you enjoyed. Make sure to hop along to the next video and check out all the other creations that have been made. I'm sure there's so many amazing ones. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.